Please come out, Louise. Welcome. Uh, this is Louise. Hello. And this is Janistra. Hello. And you've got microphones. Yes. And, oh, there and, we go. <laughs> I, I'm sure Jill has always already said to you, but one thing I always say to people is, because of the acoustics in this church, remember to speak quite slowly. Okay. okay. And out. Perfect. Push those words out. And uh, the thing to say is we support six mission organizations as a church, uh, and it's our privilege to do so. Supporting means taking a little bit more interest in them than we might in others. It means um, listening to a speaker or two um, one, one of the, from one of the organizations every term, and it means praying for them, and that's what we do for you. So we Thank pray you. for Oasis as well. Um, you're going to talk to us about the work of Oasis in a particular area, because Oasis is a huge organization. Um, uh, but you're particularly involved in youth outreach? Youth outreach based in Enfield in North London. Okay. And I know you've got a little bit of presentation. You've planned to say something, haven't yes. you? And you've come away. Where, where have you driven from today? North London. North London. So thank you. Thank you. That's a long <laughs> way to come. So thank you very much. So um, can I leave you to it? You, yes, you, no you, problem. And um, that's the screen which will show you what everyone else Perfect. can see. Lovely. Thank you so thank you. much. God bless you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. My name's Louise. This is Janice Starp. Now, I'm the mental health specialist on the youth team at Oasis Hadley in Enfield. And this is Janice Starp, and she's actually a young person that I have worked with for two years now. So I thought, what the best way to tell you how we support young people? By bringing a young person with me. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about Oasis. We did touch on it a little bit. It's a national organisation and we have plenty of academies and projects around the whole of the world. Um, I am based at Oasis Hadley, which is an academy based in Ponders End in Enfield. And today I'm going to tell you a little bit about how we support young people and how the church has supported us to make sure that we can do the best for our young people in our community. So we run parent, uh, parent support with child safety. We do weekly food cupboards, which is a weekly food bank for everybody in the community to engage in. We do stay and play for parents and infants. And we also have free holiday clubs up to zero to 10 years old. Now we have also just started doing holiday clubs through the half terms but also 10 to 19 year olds. So we run a various amount of activities. I'm gonna start by telling you a little bit about our local community in Ponders End in Enfield. Ponders End is number one for the most deprived area in the whole of the Enfield borough. We have the highest number of unemployment in the whole of the Enfield borough. Enfield has the highest levels of home evictions in, the, in London. Now, we also support this in our local community. We've had recently a lot of kind of tower blocks, a lot of flats that have been knocked down, and families have been evicted. Families have had to be moved to places like Surrey, Manchester, Luton, and been taken out of their family homes. Now... We support this by, we've done um, baking, making meals for families that have been placed in hotels, that have had no, um, no essential things to cook, no resources to make any, any dinners. So we've supported that by doing evenings every night at Oasis to run family meals for the families that don't have the resources to cook for themselves. Now I'm going to talk to you about some, oh, could we go back a second? Sorry. Thank you. I'm going to talk to you guys a bit about updates and trends. So we have had a massive increase of females involved by youth violence. Now, we run a violence reduction project at North Middlesex Hospital in Edmonton, and we support young people affected by violence. That could be on a massive scale of being involved in a fight, um, from stabbings to gun shootings to gang violence. We kind of see it all at the hospital. 
Um, now, we have had a massive increase of females' numbers attending A&E due to violence. And it's very difficult with a mixed team of males and females to support this due to females usually liking to work with females. So we have recently just recruited a new staff member for the hospital project who's going to be working with just females on uh, violence against women, who will support all of our females in the local community who has been affected by gang violence or any type of violence. We've also noticed, sorry, back, sorry, just go back one more time for me. We have also noticed a rise in the younger ages of young people. In our end of year reporting, we have noticed that we have now gone 50-50 with um, males and females, where before it was a much higher number for males. And now also our highest number of attendances in A&E due to violence has dropped between eight and 11. So our highest number used to be 11 to 15, and it is now eight to 11. So the numbers are just getting younger and younger of these young people. Um, we have started a year six group at our youth center for the year six students to come and engage and help with that transition over to secondary school. Now, we're really hoping that this is going to try and make a bit of a difference in our community for the younger children who are getting involved in gang violence, who are getting involved in all types of kind of, God knows what, in our community. So, one thing I want to share with you is some lovely ways that we have used the support that we have got from St. Nicholas Church. And one of those was to celebrate Women's International Day. Now, I run all the girls' group in Oasis. So I run four girls' groups to run the academies. And we thought it would be a lovely idea to make goodie bags for, homeless sh uh, for women's shelters. So we donated goodie bags to Solis, who is a domestic violence organization to Enfield Women's Aid, which supports um, women through domestic violence and homelessness. We had donations from Lush, Superdrug, and Phoenix. And the young people loved it. We made cupcakes, we made cookies. Um, Janista actually came to volunteer at the youth center to help with the younger ones making the goodie bags. Um, and these are just a few pictures for all of you. So they were the goodie bags and being made, part of the baking some of the amazing cupcakes that were made by the young people. If you just go to the next slide, there's a few more pictures. And here are a few more pictures of our young people, of our girls group. And we also, they came with me themselves to come and donate these goodie bags, which was really, really lovely. So that's just a few more pictures. You see Janista up there in the corner helping at the youth center. Thank you. So, some of the group work that we are doing at Oasis, we feel that it's very, very important for every young person to have a safe place to talk about things that potentially they can't talk about with parents, teachers. We offer that safe space for them. We've been running girls' group, as I've just spoken about. Um, my colleague, Andrea, he runs boys' group at both of the academies in Enfield. We have a football forum. We run music groups. I have run hairdressing workshops. And we have also done a Become Your Own Boss. We believe that, bless you, we believe that every young person should have the equal opportunity to every group, every opportunity that they can to develop their skills and interests to make sure that they're having the best outcome for every young person. Just some pictures of the work that we've done. This was, um, if you look to the picture on your right, that was our Become Your Own Boss workshop done at the Youth Centre. Um, our hairdressing programme, which again, Janista came and volunteered <laughs> with the young people to help them gain their skills. Um, and a few more pictures of our groups. Wellbeing. So as the mental health specialist on my team, I run all of the well-being and the mental health support. 
As we all know, after COVID, mental health has just risen through the roof. And it is the same for our young people. They are struggling with certain things. They were very isolated through lockdown, which really made them struggle with their social anxiety, social skills, interaction. So we have been running some wellbeing activities at our open access session. We run a wellbeing session every single day at the youth centre. Um, that can vary from all different things. That can vary from confidence building to some arts and crafts to raise awareness for mental health. Um, coping strategies to help with self-harm and low moods. It's very, very broad. Um, we also, on one-to-one -one sessions, work on improving mental health and well-being. Now, we run kind of different activities with this. One of them is actually up there. It's they, the young person can blow up a balloon. They will write down their triggers and what makes them upset or what makes them feel depressed, and they pop it. And they seem to really, really love that exercise. Um, we also signpost young people onto different services. So if, our, if the mental health need is higher than our expectation or higher than our remit, we will also refer on to the mental health services of Enfield, um, CAMS, which is Child and Adolescence Mental Health Services, just to get them that extra support. We can also refer on to therapy, counselling, um, and that in London is quite a big thing because they also have remote sessions, so if a young person doesn't feel confident to go face-to-face, -face, they can do it online, um, and also we support with that. Um, another one of these pictures is a self-soothe box, so they make we had just loads of shoe boxes and they decorated them to how they want it. And they put in the boxes everything that can soothe them when they go into crisis. Janista, would you like to say a bit about what you like to do when you're feeling distressed or what helps you? Me personally, I like to write. I like writing when I feel some type of way because it helps me get my emotions out quicker than actually letting them get stuck inside. Also, I do like art drawings and art paintings and just stuff like that to get my mind off the stuff that usually will put me down. <laughs> but yes, I would like to thank this church again for me. Uh, well, you guys don't know me yet, but hello. <laughs> you guys have helped me. Um, along my way as my journey as coming out of the ward, which has made me more comfortable within myself. But, yeah. And I've got to say, Janista has come so, so far. And she, before she, before she went into the ward, Janista didn't cook. She didn't do her own food shopping. These are all the skills that we have done together to get her into a safe place in the community. So on behalf of all of our young people, Oasis Hadley, and the whole team, I would like to thank St. Nicholas Church so much. Thank you. Uh, yes, so the first reading, uh, Acts chapter 8, verses 26 to the end, and that's page 1101 in the Bible. Philip and the Ethiopian. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Kandika, which means queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me? 
so he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and traveled about, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. From John chapter 15, beginning at verse 1. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burnt. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. This is the gospel of the Lord. Father, as you speak to us through your word, give us grace to understand it, to live by it, and to share it with others. Amen. Please do have a seat. Well, it has been good to hear from Louise and Janista this morning about the way in which they witness to their faith. And when it comes to evangelism, the more overt speaking about our faith, I suggest it's something that many of us shy away from. When it comes to evangelism, many of us go, nah, it's not for me. Meanwhile, maybe we look on enviously at those who seem to share their faith with ease. Randy Newman, talking about the prayer of commitment, which many of those new to Christian faith often pray, observes, people don't as readily pray the prayer with me as they do with famous speakers, I've heard. Those natural evangelists are always sitting down next to someone and sharing the gospel. And they always lead every person to a salvation decision. And it's always on an aeroplane. People, Philip's encounter with the Ethiopian, we heard about that in our first Bible reading. 
is not going to turn us from reluctant sharers of our faith to competent evangelists in one jump. Not at all. But this story does helpfully suggest at least three things which may help us to be better evangelists. First, the importance of being open to new opportunities. Had we read the verses immediately preceding where our reading began this morning, we would have been reminded that Philip was engaged in a very successful mission in Samaria. Had you or I been advising Philip, I suggest we might therefore have said to him, look Philip, it makes no sense to leave here and go somewhere else. You're clearly doing good work here. Philip, though, by his response, shows how open he is to be led by God, even though the evidence before him may have suggested he should stay put. Such openness to go is really quite remarkable, made all the more remarkable by the fact that Philip is told to go not to the centre of a town or city where hopefully there might have been more fruitful mission, but to the desert road where he wouldn't really have expected to find too many people at all. Indeed, perhaps nobody. In the busyness of life, when we all have competing demands upon us, we need somehow to find that all-important space so that we can hear from God and discern where the opportunities are to share our faith with others. Second, in this story, we see the importance of responding to those who themselves are ready to respond. It turns out that Philip's journey was not a wasted one. He spies an important official in the employ of the Queen of Ethiopia, which apparently is modern-day Sudan, not what we understand as Ethiopia today. The man is in his chariot and reading the book of Isaiah. Philip is told by God's Spirit to go up to the chariot and stay near it. Ordinarily, a person would not accost someone else of a higher social rank. So we can be pretty sure that Philip must have been sure of his ground. Now, I confess that when I first used to read this story, I used to Imagine Philip as a kind of Superman figure running at high speed, fast alongside to catch up with the chariot, giving the official the fright of his life as he looks out his window and see, sees Philip peering in. But in reality, the chariot would have been ox-drawn and therefore would not have been going at anything more than walking pace. Once alongside, Philip finds he has a wonderful opportunity to share the gospel with this Ethiopian. However, it wasn't because Philip was a great salesman and therefore was able to talk the official into listening to him. Far from it. Rather, what becomes evidence, evidence of Philip as he peers into the chariot and sees the man reading Isaiah is that here is a man ripe for listening to an explanation of the gospel. Well, as you may well know, the Bible often divides people into two camps, sheep and the goats, the saved and the lost, those who live in the light and those who live in darkness. The reality is, though, that people who are not Christians are not all the same. Some are vehemently anti-God, others are more open, and still others are so, so ready to learn more of what it means to commit to Christ. Our task, I suggest, is by God's grace to try and perceive those who are close to the kingdom and to share the gospel with them. Strategically, that would seem to make good sense. And actually, isn't that the model Jesus left us with when he told the disciples not to spend time in villages that didn't want to hear but simply shake the dust off their feet and move to somewhere which was more open. 
Somebody called Ernie Southgate once said, the church is always trying to take people from where they aren't to where they don't want to be. And it's a good point, isn't it? Our task, I humbly submit, is to take people from where they are to where they want to be. Third and finally, we see the importance of leaving God's work with him. We can't help noticing that this encounter has a slightly abrupt ending. When they came up out of the water, in other words, after the Ethiopian had been baptized, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, only for him later to appear at Azotus, the next major town north of Gaza on the coast road. So no follow-up, no alpha course, no Christian beginners group as far as we know in the work of evangelism. It is right to do all we can to have systems in place to follow people up when they've become a Christian. I'm all in favor of that. However, there is a danger that we hold back from doing anything because we're conscious there isn't an alpha course running. Or there is an alpha course, but there's no follow-up course, even though such things are desirable. But in the end, the absence of such things should not deter us from doing what we can and praying for opportunities for witness to arise and then leaving the rest with God. One of my favorite quotations is this, said by Martin Luther. I think to make the point, there comes a point in our lives where we have to leave things with God. I sit here drinking my mug of Wittenberg beer and I let the gospel run its course. It's a great image, isn't it? Of resting in God. Amen. Gracious God, we have come together today to thank and praise you for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Grant us, Lord, that by your holy inspiration we may be encouraged to follow you, being examples of your great mercy and goodness. Lord, we pray for our church leader, Justin of Canterbury, our ministerial team here, Alan, Jill, David, Barbara, Celeste, Chris, and all those that undertake your ministry here in Bookham. We pray especially for those involved with our local schools. May the governors, teachers, and all staff feel and teach the love of Christ with those children are in their care. We pray for our sovereign King Charles. May he know your love and be inspired by the Holy Spirit to have courage and strength to face his cancer diagnosis and be an example to all. We pray for his family and especially for the recovery of the Princess of Wales. Lord, may you encourage our King and his family to be exemplary examples of Christian faith, reaching out to all the people of the UK and Commonwealth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, as we approach the forthcoming general election, we pray for the safety of all parliamentarians and councillors May they know the love of Christ and act with honesty, wisdom, dignity and consideration as they seek to govern. We pray especially for the election of the police commissioner here in Surrey. May he or she realise the concerns of the electorate. We pray also for those that have been wronged by the post office. May those in a position of authority seek to right these ills 
and act with speed and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for our wonderful world, the rain, the bottom, and the flowers that herald spring. We pray for peace in your world, and especially for those people of Ukraine, Israel, and we remember the Christian communities of Gaza who have lost their homes, churches, and hospitals. May they never lose their faith in the goodness and love of Christ. And may peace bring a restoration of facilities to reflect your glory. Lord, we are heartened by the Easter Passion and pray for those of our parish who are sick and awaiting procedures, scans and consultations. We especially remember Tim Reader, Jenny Carlier, Sylvia Charles, Elizabeth Fernucane, Deborah Gallagher, and Jenny and Peter Evans. We pray for others known to us in our hearts. They may find your love and comfort in the anxiety and pain of illness. We pray you may ease the pain of grief for the families and friends that have recently died. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for your Holy Spirit to encourage our Christian life together and we welcome our friends, Louisina and Justina, from the Oasis Charitable Trust, who have shown us a need that we did not think possible in an affluent country, county and a developed country. May we open our hearts, minds and pockets to the needs of the Trust, thanking Jill Caldwell and Celeste for our church being our church links. Lord, we give thanks for all who support our parish, both financially and for those that work together in the various teams that keep our church working in a spirit of unity and purpose. We ask that you guide our various teams in the presence and power of Jesus, remembering especially Val Lambert and Jenny Evans, for all their work in Christian solidarity worldwide. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Later this morning, Lord, we welcome Albert and Louis Fall to the family of Christ. As they grow, may they and their families be inspired by your world. We pray for members of the parish, remembering those of our electoral role, Janice, Sheila, Terry, Angela, Laura, Tristan, and all our neighbours, both in individuals and families, who live in Edenside Road and Douglas House. Gracious God, we look for your spirit to guide Vitti Dixon and her team as seek to develop an effective communication strategy for the church development plan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you alone know our hearts and prayers, and may we welcome all, thanking you for the encouragement provided today. Lord, we rejoice in you, and pray that you fill us with your love, peace, compassion, and wisdom. Merciful Father, accept these prayers. For the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>